Okay, so today we are talking about the SIG Kilo 10 binos. Now I've had these for a good chunk of the year. I've been testing them out thanks to BTO gear. Now BTO gear is the outdoor side of Big Tech's ordinance. So big thank you to them for sending these out. Full disclaimer, that's where I got them. I'm not gonna dive into all the specs and details because there is a ton of information on these. SIG does a great job of putting out all the information on their website. I will link that down below. You can check all that out. They also have a bunch of helpful informational videos if you decide to grab a pair of these and you wanna know how to use some of the features, they have that along with the app that goes with it. More so, I just wanna talk about my experience with them, what I like, what I don't like, and is it worth it for you, especially if you're getting into scope carbine, long range, that type of thing. The first thing, is that they're just super easy to scan with. When when we had, so I have a Mark IV, a Leupold Mark IV, and then I also have a Vortex Razor spotting scope. I've used both those. They're both great spotting scopes. You have more magnification out of those, but when you're trying to scan or like pan from target to target, unless you have a pan head on your tripod and you clip in and you're able to pan with that, it's a little bit more difficult to find targets, especially doing it fast and if you're trying to do it fast on the clock. Now, as I mentioned before, I will be getting into NRL Hunter this coming year. Taylor and I will be shooting a team division. So that's kind of what got us looking at binos in the first place. And the big thing was our buddy James at TAG said, hey, if you can get some range finding binos and binos or binos that have a reticle in them, these have both. So they have the range finding capability and you do have a reticle in there. And the, the th great thing about binos is that I can just take these, I don't have to be on a bag, I don't have to be on a tripod and I can do that and scan and see whatever I need to see. I can also put it on a bag and get more stability and it's faster to set up and get on target if you're on the clock or if you're a hunter uh, and, and you think you've spotted something in the woods and you wanna check it out, pulling these out of your chest rig very quickly uh, can give you a great look at something that's maybe hiding in the shadows and it can also give you a, an exact distance so you can make that shot when it counts. Um, so I, I found that very useful in the scanning for over using something like a spotting scope. Uh, the second part is that it pairs well with your Kestrel. So as I was mentioning, because these are range finding binos, it's not only giving you the distance, but because it pairs with your Kestrel, it's giving you what your elevation hold is. So as long as you have your data in here correct, now you can do that without, without this, but hang in there. So as long as you have your data correct in here, you've got your profile built out, you've got good velocity in your, your DSF, all your data is true in here. Whenever like we're at a match, I can just put these on target, get the target distance, and it gives me my hold for that. So I can build out my sheet really quick. So as soon as I get to the stage, we read the stage outline, I come, I'm scanning, finding targets. I know, okay, we gotta go one, two, three, and then I just write those down. I just draw it out and write down what my holds are because it's giving me that in here. Now it will also give you wind if you have, like if you're using the, the compass in here, like as long as it's all calibrated and correct and you're collecting wind out of this, it'll also give you your wind holds. It's not a feature I really use because wind changes a lot. So like, you know, if you're the fourth shooter in line, the first shooter may have a stronger wind than the last shooter and it changes constantly in between. So I don't really use it for that feature so much. Some of you may uh, just know that you can do that, but that's not something that I've found to be as useful, more so just the elevation. It's very fast, especially when you're limited on time, if you're on the clock, if you're hunting, those types of things. When I was at the Ridgeline course, we had a drills that we ran, if you saw that video, where we were on the clock and you go to an unknown target. And essentially, they just give you a target, what the shape is, what the color is, and then some other marking on it, whether it's a number or a letter, and you have to find that. Now, there's three ranges. One range goes out to 300, I think one goes out to 400, and the other one goes out to six or 700. And they've got targets scattered throughout that. So you've got to scan this large area and doing it with a spotting scope wouldn't make sense you wouldn't be carrying a tripod up there with a spotting scope to try to find it. Um, doing it through your your gun optic can cause problems at times. Uh, so having these was super beneficial and because they have the ranging feature and it gives you your hold. As soon as I found the target, I knew what my hold was. I could either hold it or dial it and make shots very fast on the clock. So incredibly beneficial to do that. The other thing that I really enjoy about it connecting with the Kestrel is it connects direct to the Kestrel. Now there are some other range finding binos out there or range finders that connect to Kestrels so that will give you that same elevation. But the issue that I have is that it goes binos range finder to phone, from phone to Kestrel, and then back. And I don't like having that extra step in there. It's just one more area that could fail, one more thing where like, oh, is there a bad connection between my phone and the binos? Is there a bad connection between the, the phone and the Kestrel? And so just one more thing that could cause a headache for me. So I prefer the SIGs because it skips that step. It's more simple. If 
some of the others got rid of that step, I think it would be a much more competitive market. So maybe that's something they will do in the future uh, because I think it'd be, it's just a better workflow for everybody to get rid of that unnecessary middle step. The other thing that these have is that you have reticles in it. So you, you have different reticles you can choose in here. You can change what they look like. You can have the vertical and horizontal or just one or the other. Uh, and there's a few others to choose from. It can be mill or MOA. I, I'll, I'll leave a link for all that down below, but uh, I found that incredibly useful, especially if you're giving win calls, win corrections. So when Taylor and I are out shooting, we're training, we're at a match or whatever, we're prepping or we're just checking data, whatever, I can give a win hold based off of that mill reticle in there versus traditional binos that don't have that, you're just kind of going off of the target, right? So it's like half a target off, you know, a full target off. And it's a little bit difficult, but if you have a reticle in there, an actual ruler, you can give more precise corrections. And we felt like that would be a really good feature to have going into NRL Hunter so that we can give good corrections because you are very, you're limited on the amount of shots you can take. And so making each shot count is really important. So we think that'll be a good feature for us. The other added benefit of these is gonna be that they are much more compact than a spotting scope. So carrying this around on my chest rig is a lot easier. If I was carrying the spotting scope, I have to throw it in a backpack. That's one more thing I gotta carry. It's just easy to throw these. And you see a lot of guys carrying these in little chest rigs. This actually comes with one. Everly Stock makes some. There's a few other people who make some. So it just it's if you're a hunter, it's great because it's, it's less weight that you have to carry. For us in competition, it's less things we gotta carry from stage to stage. It's easier to set up and break down. It's just, you know, one less thing you gotta worry about. And then also traveling, so flying, where every pound counts, especially trying to meet those weight requirements for our already oversized luggage. The more weight we can shed, the better. And so these weigh less than a spotting scope. They take up less space. So ultimately it's saving us money and travel as well. So I, I found these to just be uh, much more beneficial, much more useful in that sense. Now I, I say all this against spotting scopes I'm not saying spotting scopes don't still have a place. They 100% they do. And I will talk about that at the end. Um, the other thing is you can use both eyes with these. Now these are only 10X. So some of you may say, well, that's not a lot of magnification. You're right, it's not, but your brain puts the two images together. You actually see more than you think you can. Uh, when you look at it through the camera of just looking through the 10X, it doesn't quite look like it's that much magnification, but I promise when you look at it with both eyes, you do see more and you're able to see more as far as field of view because you're using a wider field of view of the two eyes together. So ultimately it's just giving you more information. It's giving your brain more information. If you're trying to find targets, if you're doing some kind of observation, uh, it works out really well. When, when we were at Ridgeline, we had a drill that we had to do where we were finding targets and I couldn't show you guys that, but it did make it a lot easier searching through these versus guys who were using a rangefinder and they're trying with their range, their 10X rangefinder or 6X rangefinder to, to find stuff. It just wasn't enough. It wasn't stable enough, but your, your brain putting the image of both eyes together made it easier to find things, especially things that were hidden in shadows, um, things that weren't super high contrast, things that didn't have a good outline, like you were able to find those things a lot easier. Glass Clarity I already touched on, but Glass Clarity is pretty good out of these. Is it the best? No, but if you want better, you're gonna pay for it. So just keep that in mind. They already are pricey as it is, but you're getting a ton packed in and I think it's way better Glass Clarity than you're gonna see out of a lot of other things. So again, not the best, but still really, really good. And then the, the last thing I wanna to touch on is their app. Now I don't use the app, again, as I mentioned earlier, I don't like connecting, uh, I don't like connecting these to a smartphone, but their app is very useful. And if you don't have a Kestrel, you can do a lot of the things you can do with Kestrel through their app. Uh, it also has some other added features, especially for like for bow hunters and things like that. So that may be something you're interested in. Check out their website, check out their YouTube channel where they've got a bunch of information on those and, and how to use that app and how to use those features. So let's get into the cons. And the, and the first one that everybody's gonna note is how expensive these are. They are pricey, they are not cheap. But with the amount of technology you're getting packed in, the amount of things you can do with them, I do think they are well worth it for the price. However, only if that fits your budget. Uh, the other thing people will note who have these is the blue tint. These do have a blue tint to it. I honestly don't notice it until somebody says something. So if I look for it, I can find it and I can see the blue tint. Is it incredibly noticeable? No, not really. And I've heard some people say that some models have it more than others. I believe the newer generations have gotten rid of it or it's gotten better. I don't notice it. I don't notice an, an issue in image quality from it. I can live with it. It's not a big issue for me, but it may be a deal breaker for you. So if you had the opportunity to see them in person, check them out first before you buy them. So that way you know for sure. The last thing, the last con that I think some people have is not as much magnification or detail. Now, what I mean by that is when, when I'm shooting for data, so if we're shooting at 100 yards and I'm doing some data collection and we're looking at groups or we're zeroing a bunch of rifles, like if we're at a class and we're zeroing rifles and there's, you know, 15 people in the line and we've got a, you know, I don't want to walk 15 people down and back to make corrections. So what we typically do, like when I'm helping out with Joe or somebody else, 
we'll stand online with spotting scopes and we can give corrections using the reticle in our spotting scopes. These don't have enough magnification to do that. You can see the target, but you can't see that clear to be able to see exactly like very minute details on making those corrections. Is it enough for shooting out at distance? Yes, you can see plenty out, um, out to a thousand yards. But if you're trying to shoot at a hundred yards and you're correcting a bunch of people online, like you'll know what I'm talking about if you, if you had to do it. You don't want to make that walk back and forth, you know, having to walk back 10 times because you keep making adjustments and you keep throwing it off or your buddy can't shoot. So being able to use a spotting scope to make those corrections makes it a lot faster for practical application in competition and hunting and things like that. Um, it is sufficient. Just keep in mind, have, have realistic expectations that it's not gonna be the same as your 40 power um, spotting scope. So the big question is, is this for you? Well, it depends, it really does. It depends on what you're doing, in, in all honesty. Um, if you're, like, like I said earlier, if you're traveling a lot, if you're shooting competition, you're hunting, yeah, these are probably for you. If you're somebody who just shoots out on the range and plinks on weekends, and really you're just using it to spot for zero, or you're just spotting for your buddies as they're shooting at long range, and you're not really having to move around a whole lot, like you guys can, you have an area, like your range will let you set up, and you've got every, you got your spotting scope on a tripod, and you guys are hanging out, and y'all are shooting for the day, and you're just gonna be hanging out there, probably don't need these. Probably not for you. Uh, save the money, keep what you got, spend that money on ammo or something else or training. Uh, probably not for you. Now, if you're just getting into scope carbine, long distance shooting, that type of thing, and you don't you don't know where to start because you don't you don't have a spotting scope, you don't have a range finder, you don't have binos, you don't have anything, and you're like, what should I get? Uh, I would probably hold off on these. Get you a good range finder, start there for now, and then build up over time. You know, spend your money training first and, and getting better. And then as you need things like this, you can you can get them at matches. You can borrow guys' spotting scopes. You can borrow guys' binos. You can, you know, when, when Taylor and I, have, I don't, every match we've been at, somebody's either asked to look through our spotting scope or our binos, or we've asked to look through theirs. Cause you wanna say, hey, what's the glass quality on that? And you can check and see. So matches are a great place to test stuff like this out to be able to see before you, you commit to making a purchase. So again, if you're new to it and you don't have anything, start small, go to a match test some people's gear out, see what it looks like for yourself, and then buy accordingly. So uh, hopefully you guys found that useful. Hopefully you found that helpful. Go buy a Rod and Rose zip up. I'll leave a link down below. Uh, thank you guys for following along. If you have any questions about these, about anything that I left out, or if there's something you wanna know about something else, leave in the comments down below. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe. Karate drop that bell so you get notified every time I upload a video, and I will see you guys in the next one.